Whether it's the Starship Enterprise or the space station from 2001 A Space Odyssey, science fiction has always provided inspiration to scientists and engineers that build and design real spacecraft. Satellites, space stations, men on the moon, they were all once science fiction but are now science fact. That's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. A lot of space scientists are actually science fiction writers. The famous German rocket scientist Werner von Braun was the man behind the Apollo moon landings, but he also wrote science fiction for magazines and films. By the grace of God and the name of the United States of America, I take possession of this planet on behalf of and for the benefit of all mankind. So not surprisingly, the European Space Agency, ESA, takes science fiction very seriously. Since it was founded in 1975, ESA has developed loads of advanced space probes and satellites and sent European astronauts into space. Working with international partners, it's currently building the International Space Station, the ISS. One of the most influential science fiction writers of the 20th century was Arthur C. Clarke, but before he was a writer, he was a working scientist. Clark wrote a paper in 1945 that proposed the idea of geostationary satellites for telecommunications. There are now hundreds of these satellites orbiting the Earth, and the geostationary orbit has been named after him. It's called the Clark's Orbit. As well as writing novels, Arthur C. Clarke wrote the screenplay for the classic science fiction movie 2001 A Space Odyssey. Most of the action in 2001 is set on board a rotating space station. These can be traced back to the wheeled space stations proposed by Werner von Braun in sci-fi magazines from the 1960s. The space station in 2001 acted as a transfer point from low Earth orbit to other planets. And one day the ISS may perform the same function when we send human missions to other planets in our solar system. Space stations are very exotic, but of course they have to be constructed in space and the crew and supplies need to be ferried up there from Earth. Three, two, one, stop. To do this, you need spaceships that can escape Earth's gravitational pull. For this, you need powerful rockets. The man who has been called the father of modern spaceflight, Konstantin Tsiolkovsky, was inspired by writers like Jules Verne, who wrote scientific adventure novels. Jules Verne made a serious attempt to address the problem of launching a spacecraft that could escape Earth's gravitational pull. He opted to launch his heroes in a moon ship from a giant cannon with the crew inside a huge shell. Unfortunately, in reality, the acceleration forces created by Verne's cannon would have completely crushed the crew. The acceleration of real rockets is much lower than the shells from Verne's space cannon. ESA's main rocket launcher is the Ariane series. In February of 2008, an Ariane 5 successfully launched ESA's automated space freighter, the ATV, on its journey to the ISS. Based on the experience gained while building the ATV, ESA now has the capabilities to develop a spacecraft that can carry a crew into space. But for flights to other planets, new innovative spacecraft will be needed to travel those vast distances in a reasonable amount of time. And once again, science fiction is leading the way. Interplanetary spacecraft powered by solar sails appear in films like Star Wars and Star Trek, but one of the earliest references to this amazing idea was a story by Cordwinner Smith. In the 1950s, he wrote how the first interstellar spaceships might be propelled by light sails. Light sails may sound like sci-fi fantasy, but the international space agencies are finding ways to turn this incredible technology into reality. The idea is that particles of light, that's photons from stars, apply a pressure to the surfaces they hit, and in the near vacuum of space, that can give enough energy to propel a spacecraft. One of the main reasons to travel to other planets is to set up a permanent base there. And the colonization of other worlds is a common theme in science fiction. From H.G. Wells' First Men in the Moon to Philip K. Dick's Martian stories, writers have speculated at just how this could be achieved. 
Expanding our presence in the universe is not something to be undertaken lightly, but ESA and the other international space agencies are working on ideas for bases on the Moon and Mars. So just as science fiction led the way 100 years ago, it's inspiring us again as we begin to plan missions to other planets in our solar system.